My name is Sherry Honkala, and I'm from the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign, and we're here today in support of Rhonda Lancaster, who is losing her home. When my mother got ill and could not afford on her income to sustain uh, her health care, a reverse mortgage idea was presented to me. It was presented in a manner that made it look like, oh, it was, it, it was a great thing. It's going to help take care of your mother. Um, and when, you know, your mother passes away, everything will be fine. We'll work with you. You won't have any problems. The nightmare started two days after my mother died. I notified the bank that she had passed away. Two days later, I had someone calling me, t telling me that they wanted to appraise the house. Here I am getting ready for her funeral, relatives and friends coming in from all over the country, and I'm supposed to stop, drop, and let them come in here and do an appraisal. I was not allowed to talk to the bank. They refused to accept me as the executor of her estate, although papers had been filed in City Hall with accordance uh, of the way the procedure is supposed to happen. From that point on, it was a complete nightmare. I could get through to no one. No one could help me. There has been a history of denying me my legal U.S. rights as the heir to my mother's property. And I am telling you, as I stand here with Sherry, my neighbors, and all these other people, I will fight this battle to the end. This is what these, the, these people, these sharks are looking for. This is what they want. They want something, because this house is, except for two down there, are the only ones with garages. So this is like a gemstone. You know, as one of my friends said, this is prime property, but this is my mother's property and it's God's property and my property. What we're doing is we're saying not in our neighborhood, that we want somebody that has contributed to the neighborhood, who has lived in her home for 35 years to be thrown out of this house because she, is, not just the home itself will cause blight, but the absence of Rhonda being in this community will hurt this community. She's been here since she was a teenager, at least. So she grew up in this house. Her mother lived here, her grandmother lived here. You know, it's been in the house for generations. I mean, it's been in the family for generations. She's an important member of the community and we don't know what we would do without her. Well, I don't think the community would be the same without her here because she looks out for the neighbors, make sure nothing bad be going on around here. If like any, like sometimes people be around here doing a little shooting and stuff like that, she always calls the police to make sure, you know, everything is calm around here. And she's a good neighbor to have. And it'd be devastating if we lose her. The fight that she's fighting for her, the home that she's lived in with her mother, it's really important for people to be here and support her. I've known Rhonda Lancaster since she was a 15-year-old moving on the block. Um, wow. Yeah. Um, her family's been in this house for 35 years. She comes from a family of political activists, activists in the best way possible. Her mother belonged to Friends of Somafco, a group that uh, has been helping us in South Africa. So some of the meetings we used to meet here at the house when Virginia was alive. And uh, this uh, neighborhood, it's uh, very familiar with me. When I heard about this uh, problem, I said I must come here to give my support from all what uh, they have given us in our struggle. We need to support her not to lose this house because uh, this has been, uh, in a way, a historical house because of the meetings that we had here. Yes, uh, uh, she, they played a role in our struggle, in the struggle for against apartheid in South Africa. I am so pleased with the outpouring. I am getting letters and emails from people across the country now. I got something from somebody in Indiana today. So the word is getting out. So that's why I've decided I got to stand up and fight. Because if I don't fight, then the next person is the next victim. So it may as well start with me, right? Okay. She's been fully and totally involved with this neighborhood and it would really leave a deficit if she left. We can't allow it to happen because it's happening too much. For those of you that don't know, reverse mortgages are really a representation of the failure of our society. Mm. What a reverse mortgage means is that people don't have a pension after working their entire lifetimes and they don't have a way to live a comfortable time in their senior years after they leave the workforce. 
What reverse mortgages mean is that Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid aren't enough for people to be taken care of. What reverse mortgages mean is people are so desperate that the house they spent a lifetime buying, mortgage payment after mortgage payment after mortgage payment, a house that they were going to leave to their children so their children could be, have some wealth and create some wealth in inner city neighborhoods is now being taken because society has failed to provide pensions for everyone. Society has failed to provide an adequate social security check for everyone. Society has failed to have an adequate medical system to care for people in their homes as they get old. So what a reverse mortgage is, is a failure of society and a desperate lifeboat for people trying to live their final years with some dignity. What a person says when they take out a reverse mortgage is, I have no better choices. I'm going to give thousands, literally thousands of dollars in fees and thousands of dollars in expenses to the mortgage companies so I get just a little bit to care for myself in my old age. And my children who supported me, who helped me out, are now, instead of being able to inherit a house and build wealth for the next generation, are going to have absolutely nothing. And that's why it's very easy to be here and say, no foreclosures, no foreclosures on reverse mortgages when people were failed by the system. You know, when Goldman Sachs was near death, the government didn't have any trouble giving them billions of dollars so they were fine. When the shipyard was near death, Governor Corbett didn't have any trouble giving them tens of millions of dollars so they'd be fine. But somehow when a person needs help, all of a sudden the government can't find the money. And the honest answer is, of course they can find the money. That's not the problem. The problem is we're not organized to demand that the money supports us. And that's why I'm here trying to support Rhonda with Sherry and with all of you, you, because organization makes the difference. That's right. People should be able to stay in their homes. There should be a way to stop foreclosures from happening and keep people in their homes. Families should not be tossed out on the street. I knew her all my life, and uh, you know she helped. Us. I knew her before I was born, actually. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and you know she she's just been a nice lady, and we don't want to see her go nowhere. So we're gonna fight to keep her here. And uh, you know, can I get a haircut for free? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, bro. Whatever you want. <laughs>